Zach's Screen of the Week, an overview of a timely stock screening strategy aimed at helping you produce more profitable investing results. This week we're talking about covered call writing. Joining me, as always, Zach's maestro of stock screens and head of the Research Wizard Division of Zach's.com, Kevin Matris. So you've got this covered call writing screen. It's a conservative strategy where right. uh, you keep your stocks but write calls against it, as I right. understand it, correct? Right. Yeah, this strategy isn't about buying calls or puts, uh, but instead it's about writing options against the stocks that you own. And this is an excellent strategy to use in both up markets, down markets, and sideways markets. And it's used to reduce risk and generate income. All right, tell us how it works. Well, first, buying an option gives you the right, but not the obligation, to purchase 100 shares of a stock at a certain price within a certain period of time. Mm -hmm. The price you pay for this option, let's say $500, this is called the premium. So in general, if the stock goes up, the option will increase in value. And in general, if the stock goes down, it will decrease in value. But if you're buying the option, your risk is limited to what you paid for the option. Even if that stock went straight to zero, you are limited to only what you paid for the option. That is the risk if you're an option buyer. If you write an option, you're collecting that premium. So someone else is buying the right to own that stock, those 100 shares of whatever stock that you wrote the option on, at a certain price within a set period of time. If that stock goes down and the option expires worthless, the buyer of the option loses $500, but the writer of the option will make $500. And this is who we're going to be in this example. We are going to be the writer of the option. All right. And uh, I'm sure you have an example all ready for us. <laughs> I have several examples. So let me set this up. Uh, first off, let's say you have 100 shares of Apple stock at $110, for instance. Mm -hmm. First off, for every dollar Apple goes up or down, your investment will increase or decrease by $100. Now, let's say you wrote the November $125 calls, right? And let's say you collected $6.50. You will then stand to collect $650. So let me show you an example. If let's just say Apple stock goes down $6.50 to $103.50 between when you wrote the option and the expiration date, you've just offset $6.50 or $650 worth of your downside risk in your stock. Because if Apple went down $6.50, your stock position just declined by $650. But at option expiration, you've gained $650, essentially losing nothing even though Apple declined $650. Now in the second example, let's assume that we still have Apple at $110, all right? Mm -hmm. If Apple stays flat, Apple doesn't do anything, it doesn't go up or down, it just stays at $110, you haven't made or lost anything on that stock, but at expiration, that $125 call option you wrote for $650, that would expire and be paid to you. So even though the stock didn't budge, you still made $6.50 or $650. Okay. Let's take a look at example three. I think I'm with you so far. Okay, got two more examples. Now let's say Apple goes up instead. Let's say it rallies all the way up to $125. That's even better. You've just made $15 on your stock, or $1,500, and at expiration, that $125 call option that you wrote will expire worthless for the buyer, but that means you will pocket that $650. So now your grand total, your grand total gain is $21.50, or $2,150 on just a $15 move. Now in this last example, Let's just say the stock rallies past 125 bucks. Right. Let's say it goes to 131.50. You're now giving up some of your profit potential. So if it went from let's say 110 to 131.50, that is a $21.50 move or a $2,150 gain. However, 
at expiration. That $125 call option is now worth $6.50, or I should say it's $6.50 in the money, which means the option is actually worth $650, but that $650 is going to be paid to the, the, the option buyer. In other words, that's going to be subtracted from your profit. Now, as the option writer, though, you're obligated to deliver the stock at 125, even though it's at 130, uh, 13150. Now, first off, let me just say, most people don't get their stock called away from them. All right. Usually, they'll simply just buy the option back before it expires. And if that's what happens, you'll have to pay six dollars and fifty cents to get out of that position, and that'll reduce your total profit by six hundred and fifty bucks. Meaning, you've now only made fifteen hundred bucks, but you still made fifteen hundred dollars. Essentially. When you write an option, you are reducing your downside by a set amount, but you're also potentially giving up some upside potential, which is the difference between the price of the stock and the option that you wrote. Mm -hmm. Sometimes this is going to happen, although you can simply roll your option up by buying it back and then writing one further out, thus opening up your profit potential, or you can even buy a call option to increase your profit potential as well, give yourself more upside exposure. But stocks don't always go straight up. And while sometimes you may lose out on some additional upside potential, you're likely going to find yourself consistently collecting premiums on your covered call options over and over again. Now, you can implement the strategy on stocks that you already own, or you can simply screen for stocks uh, that you can write options against. Let's get to the screen portion of this okay. presentation. Uh, the screen I'm running today is pretty simple. Uh, the first criteria I'm looking for is I want to make sure, of course, that the stocks are optionable, so options have to exist. Second, I want the stocks to have a Zacks rank of less than or equals to two, so a one or a two. Uh, I also want the price to be over $30. Uh, I want the average daily volume to be over 100,000 shares. I'm looking for positive EPS revisions on the F1 and the F2 period, so I'd like to see the analysts raising their earnings estimates on these companies. I still want to find stocks that have the potential to go higher. Um, and for this one, I'm also saying I want the market value to be greater than $800 million. Uh, generally, I like to write options on, let's say, mid-cap uh, companies or even larger cap companies. Generally speaking, I try to stay away from the small caps when it comes to these kinds of strategies. Mm -hmm. Now, once these stocks come through my screen, I'll then want to look at the charts, maybe do some additional qualitative uh, uh, analysis on it, and I'll normally pull up a Zach's equity research report. Uh, but I have a bunch of stocks, and now I can figure out what stocks I would like to own and what stocks I would like to write options against to collect some additional income. And you have not one this time, but many stocks <laughs> that you're going to tell us about that right. came through the screen. Well, uh, this screen, uh, I think when I ran it this morning, there was about... I think there was like maybe 50 or 60 candidates. So again, I'm going to narrow those, uh, those stocks down. Uh, but here's five stocks that look very good, and these are five stocks that I'm considering doing a covered writing strategy on. Um, you've got one company, American Public Education, ticker symbol APEI. You've got another one called Green Hill & Company, ticker GHL. You've got Children's Place, ticker PLCE. Uh, Myriad Genetics, ticker symbol MYGN, and you also have another company that I think is interesting, Wabtec Corp, and that is ticker WAB. Now, I do want to note, after this huge sell-off that we had seen in the markets over the previous two weeks, we are seeing some spectacular rebounds uh, in, in the majority of the stocks out there. Um, I believe that once this rebound slows, you're probably going to see stocks trading more on their, their own valuations uh, as opposed to, you know, the emotionally driven price swings that we've been seeing over the last couple of days and really over the last couple of weeks. I believe once the rebound does slow, then I think it would be the opportune time to execute this kind of covered right strategy. All right. Do you or does anyone in your household own any of the stocks you mentioned in this segment? None of the stocks in the screen, but I do have Apple, which is what I used in the example. All right. You can read all about this week's screen and see some more stocks, maybe, that came through it 
by linking to it at zax.com right off of our home page. You know, the key to successful screening is in discovering those screens which have produced profitable results in the past. And Kevin uses Zax's powerful research wizard stock screening, backtesting, and reporting software program to achieve all of his screens. You can learn more about the research wizard at zax.com forward slash research wizard. With the maestro himself, Kevin Matris, and the screen of the week, I'm Terry Ruffalo.